different form. signal. You're on the air. About that. Signs not or, live. I'm going to need some more information about that. Oh, that's a land swap. Fitbit, Fitbit. Down well, at six yeah, but that's not on the agenda. Strippy, your red no, zone. But I, now uh, we're officially in order. Okay. Non-certified thing. Okay. Item one, call to order. Dr. Daniel. Uh, here. <laughs> Mrs. Nolan. Here. Mr. Porter. Here. Dr. Kirk. Yeah. And the chair is here. Dr. Daniel, would you lead us in the flag? Yes, please. please. Will we all please stand. Turn to our flag. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Consent agenda items A through E. Need a motion? Move to approve. Second. Need one want to pull anything? No. Okay. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Daniels. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Public participation. The board encourages members of the public to bring forward any suggestions for the improvement of the school system. Board members and the superintendent cannot, by law, respond to questions or comments from members of the public during the board meeting. The board will not vote on matters brought forward by the public if those matters do not relate to specific agenda items. Persons who address the board public participation must state their name and address and follow these guidelines. Not use the public participation portion of the board meeting to make slanderous, abusive, and personal statements against any individual. The board president may rule any speaker out of order who makes such statements. Not speak regarding litigation pending against the district or employees of the district. Not speak regarding a matter that is currently the subject of an investigation being conducted by the district or its agents or attorneys or which is the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation. We have one speaker, Kevin Hill. Remember, I've got this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be fine. Good evening, Good Dr. Evening. Kyle, President. You want to state your name and address? Oh, yes, sir. Let the clock can just hold for just a second. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm Kevin Hill, <laughs> principal of Epperly Heights, but I'm speaking as a person that lives in uh, at 3312 North Cardinal Drive in Forest Park, Oklahoma, in our Middale area. The clock is moving. So good evening, Dr. Cobb, President Biggers, and members of the Middale School Board. I have served in Middale schools as a head principal, assistant principal, teacher, and coach for the past 38 years. I'm also a pastor in Dell City and a proud Middale graduate, Dell City class, 1981. Yeah, Eagles. All I know is mid. All I know is Middale schools. During our convocation last week, two former students came up to me and told me that part of their decision to become educators was best was based on how I represented the profession mm. when they were children. It's amazing. Yes, these two interactions and recent conversation with colleagues compelled me to come speak for our teachers and students on today. We're at a critical crossroads in public education that none of us saw coming a few years ago. There is, in my opinion, an obvious attempt by some, by some to dismantle public schools as we now operate them. Yes, we have had to discover new and innovative ways to educate all children, but with all of these changes, there is one thing that has not changed over the span that I have worked in Middale schools. We have amazing certified and non-certified staff members that support children emotionally, socially, academically, and even spiritually. We have teachers in Middale that will not rest until they figure out how to get the job done. That's right. Dear board members, what you're hearing about desperately needing staff, particularly teachers, is true. But it's time to stop repeating how bad it has been for the past few years in education and start speaking positivity into our students' future. Right. The book of Jeremiah 29, 11 reads, and it happens to be my favorite scripture, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans that are good and not evil, to give you an expected end. 
Our kids need to know on a daily basis that their future can and will be great. We have brilliant students in our schools today who could become great teachers. We also have good students like myself, like Kevin Hill, who was the Middell Teacher of the Year, who can become great teachers with advanced education, mentoring, guidance, professional development, and love. They can become great teachers in our schools. I feel we need to start recruiting them now to teach for the future. We must stop being our own worst enemy at times and start elevating our profession. My why for becoming a teacher was not for wealth, comfort, or fame, but it was to be someone who could possibly help one child fulfill their God-given purpose and destiny. To the world, you may be just one, but to one child, you may be the world. I want to thank you for your selfless service as a board. Please remember that there are many people like me. We might not be as loud as those, you know, who have a right to share other concerns, but there's many people who thank you for your service. I'll probably take the next two minutes to thank you for that. Uh, but I want you to, to remember this. There's people like me and many others that want to tell you that we got this. We got this. We're going to be at our schools tomorrow, and we got this. So thank you for supplying us for what we need, for understanding our concerns, for knowing what we're going through. For a lot of you have been there. But I want to thank you, and I just felt led and compelled to say, out of all these years, I, I've not come up before, but I feel great. Uh, there's a transition on my campus with a lot of new students. I couldn't be more excited. When I think of my why, I talked to a lot of new teachers today at the PD. Their why is my why, Mr. Biggers. You knew me as a young man when I had some hair on my head and I was a coach, okay? I'm just, let's, let's keep it real. That's right. Yeah, it's all right to have those grins and giggles. I, I can laugh every day because I know those kids at Upperly Heights will be waiting on me on Wednesday with the transfer portal, with the canvas, with the PLC, with all the other stuff. That's part of the gig, okay? Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you. Can he speak another five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great because now I, I have to follow that. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hill. <laughs> Open slots here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Three, item 3B. <laughs> He's going to follow the report. <laughs> Superintendent's All right. report. So convocation was uh, last week. I don't know. Is it coming up on any, on your screens? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, okay. I'll just look at the big one. It's just on that one and this one. Okay. So convocation was last Thursday. We welcomed our staff back at Carl Albert High School, and we had uh, performances by um, uh, Carl Albert student playing cello, playing the national anthem, which was incredible. Uh, if you were there, you heard that. Uh, it was just absolutely fabulous. We had the Dell City ROTC bring in the colors, and uh, we had um, our we had Middle City Drumline that welcomed people in. Dr. Kirk, I think your video went viral of uh, you dancing with the students coming in, uh, and uh, and then our Teacher of the Year, Christine Harris, led us all in the pledge, and that's how we got the year started. Um, had great presentations, uh, Lindsay Barks and SSM Health came and talked about ending period poverty. Greg Whipley from the Middle City Police Department came and talked about just readiness for all of the safety concerns that people have coming back to school. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think it was a really good positive beginning to the school year and, and really uh, of the now eight times that we've started a school year since I've been here. I guess we didn't have convocation one time, but of the eight times that we've been here, I, I think this is one of the most positive beginnings that that we've had and we do have some challenges we do have some teacher vacancy still um, but I'm really excited about more things than I'm concerned about going into the school year and uh, you know that could change Wednesday but for, for today I'm feeling pretty happy right after convocation um, Dr. Broyles uh, Stacy Boyer Heather Graham and myself uh, met with uh, the student advisory board and we spent all day with them we did a leadership activity uh, up in the palm room at the field house and then we had student-led tours of all three high schools and gave them a chance to walk in each other's shoes a little bit and hear in their words what it's like to be a titan and a bomber and an eagle um, as we did that journey in one of our activity buses and 
and um, it was a great way to really start connecting these people who don't really know each other yet. And so, um, and a great way, again, anytime I get to start the school year by speaking to staff and then spending a few hours with students, uh, it's a better day than a lot of the days that I have looking at policies and spreadsheets and things like that. So uh, it's just, uh, Kevin Hill talking about the why, you know, it just reminds us of the why. That's right. That's right. What is that? I don't know. It's not me. Somebody's got a phone going off here. Theme music. Let's see if it's me. Okay. Uh, we have had professional development training going on for weeks. We had uh, three sessions of Toolbox Tuesday. Uh, in July, um, all of which had uh, 150, 250, somewhere between 150 and 200 people. Uh, again, taking time in their summer to learn from other Middell professionals. We had two days of new teacher, new teacher training last week. The first was for uh, new to the profession. Second was for new to Middell and new to the profession. Um, we we had a good professional development day on Friday. I actually did a workshop on Friday at Midwest City High School in the forum that was attended by nearly dozens of people, um, <laughs> <laughs> nearly dozens. Um, and you know what, I got a lot of good feedback from it. And so that was, it, it, it was, I had slides, but it turned into a conversation and not just a talking head with a bunch of PowerPoint bullet points. So um, we had more professional development going on today and saw social media posts from teachers saying, this is something I can actually use. And you know, the, you know, if you you know, in any sort of profession, when you have uh, continuing education requirements that's sometimes true and it's sometimes not and you know we always do our best to make it relevant and I've, I've heard a lot of positive feedback about um, about hitting the mark this year so I'm excited to hear that uh, we've started fall athletics uh, we have games and scrimmages coming up very soon in volleyball and softball football practices uh, were ongoing today and um, from what I understand the turf got a little hot um, but uh, we're doing everything we can to keep our athletes safe, and we'll be, it'll be really exciting to see kids competing pretty soon. Uh, students from all 13 elementary schools participated in STEM training at Oklahoma State University this past week. This opportunity was made po possible by a three-year grant from OSU. Dr. Daniel has um, been kind of helping us work with OSU. Um, I think we actually applied for that grant before you were on the board even. Uh, but as a product of their College of Engineering, um, you know some people that helped us kind of get this moving along. And there are going to be a lot of professional development opportunities for staff over the next three years, uh, a lot of learning opportunities, camps, and after-school programs available to our students. And so this was really just the tip of the iceberg of what's coming with that grant. It's a DOD grant that was a partnership grant between OSU, um, Oklahoma City Public Schools, Millwood, and Middell. So it's going to be it's going to be a really good opportunity for our students. Um, prior the Friday prior to convocation, um, Greg Whipley you see there in the middle again. You see Larry Stevenson up there as well, and um, Officer Preston from Dell City, uh, Sid Porter, Midwest City Police Department Chief, um, uh, meeting uh, with administrators and just talking about school safety issues and talking about procedures and talking about you know and, and I'll just say it it's kind of the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. I think all of us in education have spent the summer thinking off and on about Uvalde, Texas and what happened there and the things that we've read about it that have made us act, you know, not just ask why do things like this happen, but why was the response what the response was. And so getting answers from our local law enforcement agents about how, you know, God forbid we ever have a situation like that happen here, um, how they're going to respond, I think put uh, our administrators at ease and, you know, just some things that we where we have arrangement with local law enforcement and certain parts of the plans that really aren't what you want to publish because you don't want to make that stuff easy to search. But I can just say that I have complete confidence that if we ever have a serious uh, safety situation come up in one of our schools that the police will be there in, in quick order uh, and the response will be swift and decisive and they won't have any problem accessing our video camera systems or our doors. Um, I feel very confident about that. Uh, Larry's also been working with Oklahoma City and Forest Park Police, Depart Police Departments as well as uh, the county sheriffs. So it's a, it's a complete law enforcement responsibility. And one thing that we keep hearing over and over from our, um, our local police departments is that 
if something happens in Midwest City, you're going to see Dell City Police there too, and vice versa, and that goes all the way around. So, you know, anybody with a badge in the area is going to be in a position to help out, and uh, and I feel confident about that. And my only hope is that we never have a chance to find out just how ready we are. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> the Middell Bot Ball Robotics teams once again entered the global scene as they participated in the global conference on educational robotics. This is serving as a reminder, by the way, that it's about time for me to get my eyes checked again. <laughs> I'm not usually having to read all the way to the back of the room. Meet your teacher night is tomorrow. And so all of our elementary schools, we have um, all everyone in cabinet is going to visit at least three schools. And um, it's at the same time. It used to be all over the place and different times and, and schedules. but. I uh, would like for the board, if you can, to get out to some schools as well and and uh, and, and see how everybody's looking forward to coming back. Good. That is the board report. Good job. Okay. Now that's only elementary schools tomorrow. Is that all? Do we have secondary tomorrow night, Dr. Broyles? There's a few. They, they chose their own. Right, right. Okay. Thank you, dear. Okay. Thank you. Oh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Item four. Vote to approve or not approve a new salary schedule for assistant superintendent. Dr. Cobb? Item four? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Happy to report. Oh, you know what? Okay, so let me hit refresh because I have item four or something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Apparently, this is from what I was looking at the, at the uh, agenda early last week. All right, so right now we have uh, different salary scales for different leadership different administrative positions but we have uh, several people grouped together so like you have chief financial officer chief human resources officer when we didn't have an assistant superintendent at the tech center you'd have the chief operating officer out there all on the same salary schedule as assistant superintendents and there's a pretty clear delineation between the scope of those roles and so what we're wanting what I'm asking you to do is approve a new salary schedule for assistant superintendent and then in the letter I say that the current schedule would remain in place for those chief officer positions, chief finance, chief human okay. resources, okay. and so on. So it's just really separating out to different job categories, okay. different job titles, so that they can be compensated appropriately. Move to approve. Motion. Second. Dr. Kirk? Aye. Ms. Nolan? Aye. Mr. Porter? Aye. Dr. Daniel? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Item five, vote to approve or not approve McKinney Vento Act 2022-23 Transportation of Homeless Students Agreement. Dr. Broyles. Oh. Okay. <laughs> President Biggers, um, members of the board, and Dr. Cobb, I'm asking that you approve the McKinney Vento Act for the 22-23 school year. This is just the seven mm -hmm. school districts um, agreeing to be fair as when it comes to transportation of the students. Move to approve. Second. Does this Dr. Broyles, just, is, this is the same thing that we do every year, every is it year. not? It's yes. just a recurring, and then yes. and we have to, to to reaffirm that every year. Yes. Okay, thank you. And is there are not any drastic changes, are there? No. No, sir. Okay. Ms. <clears throat> Nolan. Aye. Uh, Dr. Daniel. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Item six, Dr. Boyle, vote to approve or not approve revisions of policy 1-32, 1-18, and J-36. Uh, yes, um, we are asking that you, if you look at I-32, it is just to um, make the updates, to update the um, name in there, that who they can file a complaint with. And so that was updated in um, policy I-32. In I-18, we just um, changed the language that we included all through our student expectation book on what is defined as a group and then on j36 we are just asking that we have changed that we are allowing high school students now to be able to have permission to drop off their siblings at the middle school because how it reads in the student expectation book is that no high school student can go on the middle school campus are there any implications with i32 as it relates to the new uh Critical race theory. No. Okay. No. Okay. It's it's the complaint process that would be followed if we ever have somebody raise an issue about it. 
Yes. The only the only change is that instead of taking, I mean, basically we're taking Dr. Eric's out name out and putting That's Dr. Morrill's right. name in. Okay. But it okay. but it, yeah, this is the policy that would, that any individual would follow if they had a complaint. In case something would happen with that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said was that in here. Yeah. No. no. Sorry. <laughs> it's if it was applicable. Okay. So for high schoolers dropping off middle school kids, do they still have to sign in as if you were? No, sir. Parents? This is when um, they do uh, drop off and pick up. The way our student expectations read is that high schoolers are not allowed on campus, period, okay. or they could have um, consequences. Okay. And so the committee just wanted us to update that because you do have siblings that drop off their um, siblings at the middle school. Okay. Yeah. So it still says that high schools are not allowed mm -hmm. to be on campus unless they are dropping mm -hmm. off yeah, a sibling. Yeah. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay, Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Item 7, vote to approve, not approve revisions of the 22-23 student expectations, policies, procedures, and safety guidelines. Okay. We are asking that you approve the student expectation books for this school year. There's a few changes in there that um, if you had questions about, I'll answer. Do we need a motion first? Move to approve. A second. Second. Questions? Now, and I'm sure, I'm, but per our approval tonight, how soon will these get to the schools? Do we know? They are ready to go tomorrow. Well, excellent. You approve it and then print They're shot. Print it tomorrow. Do we have printed copies for everybody or do we mo do most we of it electronically print now? We print a few copies for every school. Not a lot. We ask right. that um, parents go online. We'll place it on the um, Middell website and all of the school's websites tomorrow. But we only print a few copies for the yeah. schools. Dr. Poyles, it looks like, except for the the, the order in which the, the board members are listed, it's just the, trans, it's the transfer information mm -hmm. that is different in this year's, and that has... And that is that reflects state law. State right. law is that correct? Correct. But also on discrimination again, right. we added in there what is defined as groups. Okay. Very good. Yeah. I saw that. Good job. Okay. Okay, Mr. Porter. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Item eight. Vote to approve or not approve the purchase of ICEV student licenses. Yes, this is for our career tech classes that are located inside our high schools. This is the program that they would use to allow students to earn certification, not certification, birth certificates <clears throat> in the programs that they are completing okay. in the classroom. We have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any questions? Is this uh, existing? Or is this a new purchase? Is this um, I am doing this for Lacey Brown because <laughs> okay. she is out sick. Right. But from what I've read in here, this is a renewal yeah. from oh, renewal. last year. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kirk. Aye. Miss Nolan. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Item nine. Vote to approve and not approve. Thank you. Solent Health LLC for additional speech language pathology, nursing services, school psychologists, paraprofessional, occupational and physical therapy providers for the fiscal year 2023. Mrs. Wilson. President Biggers, members of the board, Dr. Cobb, I ask for your approval for our contract with Solent Health. Move to approve. Second. Questions? So, so is this a renewal? It's a renewal. Okay. We've used solely it in the past. We used it last year for a speech pathologist. Okay. This year we're looking to use it for a speech pathologist and an interpreter. Okay. Do we have school psychologists now? We do. Mm -hmm. we, we do have, um, I believe we have nine on staff, okay. and then we'll be contracting with some as well. Since, since we're, since Solient is, is an LLC, do, are, are, are the people who work, who they send us, are, that, are they their employees or are they our employees? They are their employees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, will, we do not have um, Social Security Correct. coverage for them, Correct. nor do we pay into teacher retirement. Correct. Okay. Or right. workers' comp. Uh, or, or workers' comp. comp. Or workers' comp. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. 
just wanted to I just wanted to 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 make sure that my understanding was was correct. That is correct. And have we <clears throat> have we fully utilized them in the past for what we had them contracted for or we so we have, um, just like I think any other market, their market is getting depleted also because schools are in the same situations that we are, so they're tapping into those contract companies. So as many contractors as they, they have for us that's qualified, we take those contractors. Okay. Right now they have one speech pathologist, mm. and that's a national company that they use. And we got that speech pathologist, so we're lucky in that. Good, 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 mm -hmm. good, good, good. Okay, Mrs. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kerr. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Item 10, vote to approve and not approve an agreement with Paulette Pitt, PhD, PLLC, an independent contractor to provide school psychologist services on an hourly basis for fiscal year 2023. I ask for your approval to enter this contract with Dr. Pitt. Uh, she was a uh, school psychologist with us before, so we're lucky enough to have her be able to come back and contract with us now. Job. It, will she? Does she cover all of the? I'm sorry. Do we Make need a motion, a motion to please? Move to approve. Second. Um, <laughs> does she? Will she go to all of our schools, or did the students go to her, or how did, how does that particular contract work? So we have her contracted with one of our schools right now, but if she's needed at other schools to perform evaluations or assessments, she has the ability to do that also. Okay. 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 Mr. Porter. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Item 11, <clears throat> vote to approve or not approve therapy link solutions for additional speech language pathology providers for fiscal year 2023. I ask for your approval to enter in a contract with therapy link solutions. We have contracted with this company before. It's also a local company. And so they've been very generous with the speech pathologists that they've had that they just normally work with us. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Porter. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. <coughs> Item 12, vote to approve or not approve the career and technology education program at our three Middale High Schools for fiscal year 2022-2023. Mrs. Brown. Is that Lacey? Mrs. Brown. Mm -hmm. Dr. Cobb, is that Lacey Brown? Yeah. Um, yeah. This, um, yeah, she is out right now. Okay. <laughs> she is out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> President Biggers, members of the board, and Dr. Cobb, I am here to ask for your approval. Move to approve. Second. Second. Oh. Question? Nope. Ms. Nolan. Thank Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 13. Vote to approve or not approve the 2022-2023 Middale Technology Center's Policy M-1 Student Handbook. President Bigger, Biggers, board members, Dr. Cobb, I'm here to ask for approval of the 2022-23 student handbook. Move, move to approve. approve. Second. Move to approve. Second. Second. Are you settling in? Day yes. 13. I'm loving Day it. Day 13. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I am totally enjoying it and ready for the students to be here on Wednesday. I like, so. I like the new logo that you have. Oh, I thank you. I really yeah. do. They worked hard on yeah, that, so. I like it. Okay. Has the handbook changed much from last um, year? Just or? very uh, very minor changes. They updated the morning time to match the 
afternoon time, two hours okay. and 45 minutes. We had to adjust some federal financial aid to match the federal financial aid laws. Okay. So, okay. You and date changes. You were supposed to say you totally redid it in 13 days. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are making me nervous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you. 14. Vote to approve and not approve Meddell Fall Sports official <coughs> pay schedule for 2022-23. Mr. Collier. Oh. <laughs> She's also Coach Collier. Everyone's sick. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, Mr. Biggers, <laughs> members of the board, and Dr. Cobb, I am asking that you vote to approve the Meddell Fall Sports official pay schedule for the 22-23 school year. We have a motion. Move to approve. A second. I have a question. We were expecting this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I, I have a question. Are, are we having trouble finding officials again this year? Or you don't know the answer? I'm sorry. I didn't need to put you on the spot. I, I know that this is a, it, the, the OSSAA raised their pay rates in response to a shortage of officials <coughs> last year. Um, and so I. Th you know, we'll have to get this all of our seasons started to find out how this has helped with that. It's yes. like everything else. But I can tell you that we've ch raised the varsity football game to $105 and the middle school <coughs> to $45. That's the only changes that we've done to the schedule. Okay. 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 Uh, Mr. Porter. Aye. Ms. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Royals. Item 15, vote to approve and not approve Thompson Educational Furnishings for Procurement of Furniture and Equipment. Mr. Bryan. President Biggers, members of the board, Dr. Cobb, uh, this is a request for approval to approve Thompson Educational Furnishings for classroom improvements at all three of our high schools and all three of our middle schools. Good. Good. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any questions? Now these are these are middle and high schools. These are for our middle and high schools. Yes, ma'am. That's okay. correct. All three of each. Mm -hmm. Okay, Miss Nolan. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, item sixteen, vote to approve and not approve certified commercial restoration LLC for emergency flood water. Remediation services at Dell City High School. This is a basically cleaning up a accounting error on their end. They didn't bill us for this. Uh, we asked for a state of emergency uh, following the storm that tore the roof off across the street mm -hmm. from Dell City High School. Also flooded the Manning Center mm -hmm. and it got off their radar, also got off ours. We never did have an opportunity to bring it to you because it wasn't brought to our office. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking for approval now. Is all of that storm. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was just going to ask: Is all of that storm damage repaired now? Yes, sir. It is. Okay. okay. Move to approve. Second. Okay, Mr. So Porter. I'm not going to ask one. So oh, you had a question. I'm sorry. So because it's coming late, maybe a year late, it's still in the budget allocation to. Well, that's pay. my understanding. I checked with Jacqueline before I came. Okay. <laughs> Make sure we didn't spend the money already. No, we're Take good. Jacqueline's taking care of us. All yeah. right. <laughs> okay. Mr. Porter. Aye. Mr. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. 17. Vote to approve and not approve Happy Playgrounds <coughs> LLC to design, procure, and professionally install playground equipment, amenities, and safety surfacing at Cleveland Bailey, Parkview, and Tinker Elementary. Again, this is our third round of playground improvements and renovations. Uh, this will be at Cleveland Bailey, Parkview, and Tinker. And it will bring the total to nine that we've done so far. And we have the last four in development and design. And those four are Dell City Elementary, Midwest City Elementary, Pleasant Hill, and Soldier Creek. And we'll get those to you just as soon as we can. Move to approve. Second. When will these be completed at uh, Cleveland Bailey, Parkview, and Tinker? As quick as I can get the materials here. I'm we're, sorry? As quick as I can get the materials here. We're still, okay. we're still having trouble with supply chain. Uh, Got it. I, I'm hoping October. 
Okay. And th there are two other schools that, that are still on the list to There's be done? Four. 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 And four. what are those again, please? Those are Dell City Elementary, Midwest City Elementary, Pleasant Hill, and Soldier Creek. Okay. Thank those you. were scheduled to be split up three and one, but Dr. Cobb uh, allowed us to go the last four. So okay. the last four we'll be bringing them to you. Will you be bringing those to us next month? I don't think they'll be that quick. Okay. Uh, they're okay. presently under design right now. Okay. Hopefully by the spring. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hopefully. Are these are these uh, playgrounds built to accommodate populations of the various schools, or is it just one design only that comes in, or? Basically, it's for the entire population of the school, uh, and it's age appropriate. So and it's we, custom to each each campus. Oh, I'm sorry. It's That's custom to each campus. Yeah, it is. Okay. And our, they include ADA upgrades as well. That's correct. Our our consultant has worked with each principal in the design. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Porter. Aye. Ms. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Item 18, vote to approve and not approve a new policy, G-50 adjunct instructor policy. Mrs. Ms. Houston. President Biggers, members of the board, and Dr. Cobb, um, I'm bringing for your consideration a new policy review regarding adjunct instructors. Um, have you had the opportunity to read what I have presented or worked with? Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, um, this is what it has come to in education. We're, we're there. And um, I appreciate Mr. Hill's words today because no truer words have been spoken to my ears in a very long time. He's right. We have to start pushing the positive and, and uh, screaming from the rooftops, if you will, the, the reasons why, we were, why we're here. But until we can start getting that narrative turned and start getting more educators in our colleges and universities, and it's happening, I'm seeing it happen, um, we were able to place three um, student teachers this semester two of them for sure we're, we're bringing them in and we want to raise them up the mid Del way and then get them jobs here in the district and then the, the third one same thing we just won't get her quite as soon uh, so we're seeing that swing it's just going to take a little bit of time and in the meantime the state legislators uh, lifted the hourly limit as to the number of hours that an adjunct teacher can be um, employed in a district it used to be I believe 217 hours so that meant they could come in and teach one or two classes at a time and that limits not there anymore so now we can look at actually hiring them full-time as full-time instructors um, the initial board policy that I worked on with UConn Public Schools was much more stringent. I was adding associate's degrees or a minimum of a certain number of hours and lots of criteria. I ran that by OSSBA and they said that wasn't the intent. The intent was actually to loosen it up to give school districts a little right. more leeway when they're hiring. Right. Now, will we be doing that and just hiring? No, that's not our, it's not our goal. We still want to hire the best that we can find. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of children, even students who graduated in 2020, they didn't really know what they wanted to do. I mean, who did in 2020? Mm -hmm. So they haven't gone back and gotten their associates, or maybe they've just done a few college hours. And maybe this is the opportunity to bring them in and show them the positive experience they can make for the future, and then get them into the degree programs and, and be able to go that route. So. Um, we're proposing that they would be paid on a non-certified instructor salary schedule, so they're not coming in at teacher pay. They also would be covered, they are considered support employees. They are not considered certified employees. Uh, they will be issued an adjunct teacher number from the State Department of Education, uh, and they do have criteria they have to meet. They have to show us years of experience, or most of the ones we've seen so far just to give you an example, we have a person from another district who um, was completed two years of their emergency certification process, and then he was hired to be an athletic director for a district. That took him out of the certified teaching years. It was considered a break in service for him. 
So when he tried to come back and apply for his third and possibly final year of emergency certification, he was not able to do that any longer because he had that one year break in service. So he has no other way of ever teaching again and that's what he wants to do. He left that athletic director position because he wants to go back to the classroom, he doesn't have a route. So those are the kind of people that we're being able to take in under this adjunct um, policy that we're proposing today. Move question. to approve. I have a question. Move to approve. Move to second. Okay. Then I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Based upon that, I'm, I want to go to compensation. Now, which schedule? Will they, be, will they be paid on? It's called a non-certified instructor salary schedule. Okay. And it's not in the negotiated agreement. It, they're not covered. It's not one of the salary schedules covered under See, that. They're they're non-certified. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's typically what we start an emergency certified teacher on until they get that certification. So if a person has applied, say, in late July okay. for emergency certification, okay. it takes some processing time. Okay. We don't want to assume and overpay them as a certified teacher because they're not a certified right. teacher. But then when they get, get their back. certification, we can back it up to the date the State Department okay. of Education voted for so them. So retroactive. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. This just will not, this will not be retroactive. They will be on a non-certified salary schedule okay. the entire time. They are not earning years of teaching service. So if they come and work with us under an adjunct instructor policy for five years, and while they're doing that, they are working on their teacher credentials, and they graduate and they become a teacher, they don't come in with five years of teaching service. Okay. They come back at a zero. So there's a little bit of an investment involved here for these people who uh, sign up for this. And it also still shows some respect for our teaching okay, gotcha. group that, that, that got the degree and all of that. But the benefits? To receive the benefits. Yes, they're all. Yes, all the they still have all of the same um, ability to have all of the same benefits that okay. that anyone else has. Okay, good. Okay. So, do we, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say. Um, so, I guess you're sort of describing a pathway to some of these individuals to becoming by teachers. Mm -hmm. um, are we? I guess you're thinking about that, but this may be an opportunity to provide a pathway for some of these folks mm -hmm. that you know, want to either recover, like you said, and get their certification or even just grow them into a certification. Yes, yes. Are we thinking about that as well? This yeah, might be that's what I'm hoping. Right? The, I don't want this adjunct instructor policy mm -hmm. to be the route that we go. This mm -hmm. isn't mid right. This that's isn't right. what we want. That's right. I that's want right. to put a certified that's educator right. in every classroom. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is I don't have them. Right. We currently have about 37 openings still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've done job fairs, and uh, Ms. Boyer posts graphics and puts things on, and it just, we're just struggling right now. And I think this yeah, may just be a little bit more to get us where we need to be until yeah. we can get them growing. Yeah, I totally, yeah. I totally, I'm sorry. I totally understand. I just yeah. think that, you know, putting a positive spin on it, this can be an opportunity Absolutely. to grow mm -hmm. folks That's into the way I'm certification. Seeing it. Exactly. And, yes, we're filling a void right now, but we can actually use this as a program Absolutely. to entice more to... Right. Education. It's very similar to how we have our para to the classroom. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. teachers who, or right. staff who come in and they're para professionals yeah, yeah. and they see what those teachers are mm -hmm. doing and they decide they want to go back to school and they take that route as well. So very similar. Yeah. They just don't start out with that associates and bachelors just yet. One more, then I promise I'm going to shush. <laughs> Will this possibly exacerbate our sub situation? Do you find, you think thinking about subs, we'll pull them out and they go the adjunct route? And it's how comfortable with our subs right now. The group that I'm more concerned about are our paraprofessionals and okay. teacher assistants. Those are the ones that we seem, because they're in those buildings and they're okay. seeing it. And to a certain degree, they're already doing it. And they want they want to continue it. So um, that right now seems to be the bigger group I'm concerned about. Okay. Um, fingers crossed right. that we I don't know. have as many I out. Um, I did have a person reach out the other day regarding changing some things with her absence. Mm -hmm. And I was pleasantly surprised she had entered all of her absences. She's going on maternity leave. She had entered all of her absences and all of the absences had been accepted by different subs. Of course, the principal was like, no, 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 I already have a long term sub I'm going to put in that position. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's going the right direction. We just want to continue see. that path. So I'm just keep going. I will tell you that when I first read this, I was terribly disturbed. Yeah, yeah. I was dreadfully disturbed. Yeah, it was too. 
and I saw us going down Florida's path and giving 12 hours of instruction to teachers and putting them in in the classroom and calling them teachers. That's right. And we have worked very hard in Oklahoma to develop professional teaching credentials. And I hate for us to to seemingly depart from that. Now, I understand that we've got to get <coughs> teachers into the classroom. We've got to get people into the class. But it's got to be more than just Title. Yeah. putting a warm body behind a desk. Right. right. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I am very glad that we've got you there as the guardian to, to make sure that we've got people in our classrooms that need to be there. On our adjunct, will they be college graduates? Are they required to be college graduates? No, ma'am. No. And, and I absolutely 100% understand where you're coming from. When I first heard about this, I was shocked. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. And I, I kept pushing back and pushing back. And it was, nope, that's true. Nope, that's true. Um, even kind of drug my feet a little bit and I said I'm not sure this isn't the route we want to go and um, started talking to other districts looking at the law using OSSBA resources and just figuring out where where are we with this this is the same legislature this is a law that was passed by the same legislature that allows this that has said no CRT but they didn't define That's right. it I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was probably a. It's true. It's true. And an inappropriate comment. But so, um, I guess I'm getting caught up, right? So, um, so an adjunct adjunct uh, instructor. instructor mm -hmm. What would their role be? Are these substitutes, administrators? Are they assistants, or, or would they be in the classroom teaching history for? High school students so for different classes what, what exactly they are would not they administrators mm -hmm. and they are not substitutes okay and they are expected to come in and do uh, as much of the role as a classroom teacher okay. there will be some people who are very successful with this just like we see in emergency certifications mm -hmm. people have bachelor's degrees in general studies apply for emergency certification and come in and do a wonderful job there are people who apply for emergency certifications and have bachelors and masters in all of the education and come in and they don't do as good of a job. So I don't truly believe that the highest level of education determines the highest level of teacher. However, we do want someone who's dedicated to educating themselves further because then they'll be dedicated to educating our youth further. So. I don't disagree with all of the concerns you've brought. I don't. But the fact of the matter is we need to get some people in here, and they're not just warm bodies. We're being very – I've sent them back. Well, hey, can I hire so-and-so? No, no, that's not – we're looking – a minimum high school diploma is what is required. Um, but then we're also looking at, for example, most of the paraprofessionals that we've had are, um, they don't, maybe they only have 39 hours towards an associate's degree. Or um, they've completed the parapro and they're doing some college work. Uh, most of them have something in addition to. Um, the ones that I will present to you later if this policy um, is accepted, the ones I'll present to you later are the unique situations of people who've been perhaps a paraprofessional in a special education classroom mm -hmm. and they've decided they would like to try teaching third grade as well. Now they won't just be thrown in there. We're not just going to say get in there and get it done. They'll have the same professional development opportunities. They're going in most <coughs> cases they're going to be surrounded by quality educators who can help them, help them write lesson plans and work with them and make them I guess if you wanted to compare it to something similar to student teaching. Mm -hmm. Without the management training yes ma'am and, and we will offer those we will have them you know like we do the other professional development but um we'll have to strengthen that yeah. so we have but in all this right there's a gate they have to go through which is your office right yes and we have to look at individual case by case to see um if they have the qualifications the work experience and then of course they'll be evaluated once they come in yes um 
So that's another area that we were able to raise. The law doesn't, it says they do not have to be held to the at TLE standards that teachers are. We will be holding ours to the same standards and they'll be meet, meeting the same evaluations as any other classroom teacher. So the first path that they have, or hurdle they have to get over, is through the building principles. Mm -hmm. So building right. principles, um, <clears throat> hire, or maybe they've seen this person working. Mm -hmm. I know at one site it's a person who's a paraprofessional. Mm -hmm. That person's been employed at that school two, three, maybe even four years. Okay. That principal's seen that teacher, right. adjunct instructor, if you will, it working, doing the job. They know what they're getting. That person just doesn't have the education that they need to get those teaching credentials. I, I guess my concern is also the academia, the shucks, in terms of when you're importing kiddos who are going to be tested and how we that's are. so heavily weighs on everything. We are. But the building principals, they know who they're hiring. They know they're getting adjunct instructors. When they're recommending them to me, and they have to justify it, they can't just say, I'm recommending this person. Mm -hmm. I have them say, tell me which area this fits. How are they qualified to take this position? How do you see them being successful? And if they can't answer those things, then we and, and but they never seen them in a classroom them. either. Um, sometimes so, they somehow. have. Um, okay. We we have some principals who, who have they seen. they okay. have seen them. They're seeing them in classrooms as paraprofessionals or okay. as uh, whatever the case may be. I use the example of the emergency certified person. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's another one who was an emergency certified person in another district, Oklahoma City, and he wanted to leave Oklahoma City. If he leaves Oklahoma City, he can no longer be continue to pursue the um, emergency certification route because he's changing districts after the second year. So he is considering choosing to come here and changing from a t certified teaching to a support employee because he, it's more important for him to come to Middell than it is for him to, to continue the emergency sort of he can try it again uh, more of a an alternative way later and once you get him in a classroom we will stop looking for teachers right no 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 no, no. Okay. we will keep the position itself okay. will close but we're going to keep positions open okay. look continuing to look for teachers year-round even if they I want to bring to you all later in the year the possibility of hiring teachers in advance um, there's a couple of districts in the state that do that. Mm -hmm. I know I'm probably always going to hire at least 10 elementary ed certified teachers. So maybe in December, I can start hiring them for the 23-24 school year. Mm -hmm. And then when they, so if they're wanting to leave a district, there's no, I get them early, I guess. I get to the lake and start fishing a little earlier than everyone else. The other thing I'm concerned about is that Our schools of higher poverty mm -hmm. will have an inordinate number of emergency certified or adjunct instructors. Mm -hmm. And that creates a, a, a second tier mm -hmm. of education, and that's not acceptable. So, um, I, and I, I, agree I just want to jump in and say I share that concern, and I still think having an adjunct instructor that the principal's working with is preferable to having a long term sub. Okay, but it's, but it, but as as Ms. Houston has said, I've asked her anytime we fill a position, if we fill a seventh grade math position with an adjunct instructor, we're going to keep that position posted because we want to find a full time teacher. And I don't I don't see us ever at a point where when we have a qualified teacher that wants to come to Middale in any month of the school year, I don't care if it's the first week of May, we hire them. <laughs> We get them and, on the payroll. And keep in mind, a long-term sub doesn't have the accountability piece of the evaluation that we will be able to do. And I, and I understand that, but there are some pitfalls. There are. There are oh, some yeah. serious concerns that I think we just need to be aware of before we, before we do that. Now, did you tell us how many people on the, on the uh, uh, personnel personnel? So since this was, I knew I was bringing the policy first, I kept them separate, but the one, one person is for Carl Albert High School. He's actually a certified teacher. He's certified in another area, but he's going to be adjuncting in psychology. So that's a little bit different. So he's separate. And then we have five names that we would re request for adjunct instructors. Two are at Epperly Heights, 
as fifth grade instructors, and I assure you that principal and his assistant have worked tirelessly to fill those positions. That's, okay. And every time he filled one, two opened. It's just been that kind of a year for them, okay. and it's broken my heart every time, but that's where two of them are. So. I believe they'll receive everything they need to be successful teachers. The other, uh, another one is Midwest City High School Business, mm -hmm. and then Midwest City Middle School Math, and Mr. Sanders has worked hard to fill his positions. He, out of all the middle schools, he's had a lot to, to fill. And then the final one that we have as of right now is Dell City High School Business. Is which high school? Bus Dell City High School. Okay. Now these people have been hired yeah. by these schools. Um, have they been hired? Have they so been? some of them have been uh, paraprofessionals in our district or worked in other areas, okay. um, but we haven't. That's what you'll vote on tonight. Okay, is so they're not, they don't know. They've not been hired. Okay, that's no, okay. Can you just not explain concerned. what a paraprofessional is for me? Sure. A paraprofessional is a, so a teacher assistant is a person who, ha they're required to have like an associates or mm -hmm. pass the para pro test. They have qualifications they have to meet and they come in and they're a teacher's assistant. Mm -hmm. A paraprofessional is someone who does all of that and then they meet additional training so they can be in special education classrooms. Mm -hmm. So not only do they meet those criteria, but then they do the extra okay. testing and coursework, classes, not necessarily okay. coursework. So okay. those, the adjunct instructors will not be, will not have like a, a master teacher who will be working with them. They're gonna have a principals and assistant principals. Yeah. They'll still have a mentor teacher available okay. to them, just like an entry year okay. teacher would have. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Are we going to not treat them like a uh, student teaching role where you really mentor them? Um, it's really sure going to be a hybrid it's, it's model, a hybrid, if yeah. you will, because they're going, they haven't done student teaching mm -hmm. and they haven't done some of the things, but, but we're going to offer them the opportunity to be able to come in and work with some of our strongest teachers okay. um, in some of our stronger buildings. And I mean, the schools that I named are the ones we have so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's not ideal. Yeah. I think uh, Pleasant Hill has reached out and they're looking at one as well. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, which ones are, um, this isn't a thing that we are like, yes, we can finally put anyone we want in these. These yeah. are things yeah. we have spent hours and hours like I said pouring over this whenever yeah, they yeah, mentioned yeah. they're lifting the lifting the 217 hour the conversation was well then why would anyone want an emergency certify anymore because that's what we want we yeah. want them to reach that criteria yeah, and my questions are centered more around the concerns right it's is do they have a pathway if you have those people on the fence and you want to grow them into being certified mm -hmm. so having a pathway helps and then also how do we do the proper oversight so that they are getting the mentoring and the skills they need to be successful mm -hmm. if they don't have the certification. So that was my two points about, you know, do we treat them like student teachers? Are they going to be prepared <coughs> with a, a strong teacher? Mm -hmm. And then also, do they, do we have some type of program for a pathway to get them there? Yeah. So. Yeah, we are planning to, mm -hmm. pair, that is the goal, is to yeah. pair them with that and then to have them do professional development. Mm -hmm start working towards coursework. The, yep. the goal isn't to come here and just be in this position right. mm -hmm. forever. It's to come here and... Yeah. And if you, if you pair them with their mentor teacher, will that mentor teacher be compensated? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like, just like, like, like we do now. Right. They really are, it, it's hard to explain, they really are <laughs> a hybrid. They are considered a support employee, mm -hmm. but they're going to receive all of the okay. support and assistance okay. that a classroom teacher, okay. a typical, okay. even traditionally certified teacher would. Okay. Yep. Yeah, my last point was we have the gatekeeper, right? So you're not going to let anybody <laughs> off the street come in and, no, and that, it won't jump be in a class for the yes. kids, right? So I think those three things. Um, it is, it's, in my opinion, this is non-ideal, but it sounds like you're on top of it. And um, I guess you've heard our concerns. And we I think make we the all best agree it's, it's right? not ideal. It's, it's not, not what ideal, we would but want, but we gotta make it, it may be a temporary fix mm -hmm. to kind of keep us together until we can get more of those educators mm -hmm. coming out of those colleges. Yeah, yeah. Are we ready? Mr. Porter. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. I'm going to vote aye because it's the best we can do right now, but it's not going to be our default. No, ma'am. No. Okay. Dr. Kirk. I'm going to sing this. I'm going to echo Mrs. Nolan. I'm, I'm just not happy with it. But as I said, I mean, we, we have to go move forward. So I'm going to give you an eye with that. Dr. Daniel. 
and uh, I'm going to say I am going to say that, um, you know, by saying I and approving this doesn't mean we're going to open the floodgates, right? So we still have the right of refusal for folks coming in that's not a good fit, that's not qualified. Um, so with that, I'm going to say I. And the chair votes the same way as Dr. Daniel. Hi. <laughs> We appreciate very much the, the thought that you have put into this yeah. to make sure that it, we do it correctly. Yes, yes. Um, done a good job at that. Mm -hmm. It's just unfortunate that we are in this position at this point, point. Um, and that this is not that was not meant. All of my any of my questions were certainly not meant personally, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, because I know that that's. If there was any other way we could do this, mm -hmm. we would do it. Right. I've tried all summer to find another way to do it. <laughs> I know. I know. No. Okay. Thank you. Item, item 19, vote to approve and not approve a recommendation for Middale Schools to use the hourly method, 1080 hours to operate during the 2022-2023 school year. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This. Go ahead. Move to approve. Second. Get that out of the way. Yeah. It's a pretty typical what we do every year. We extend our school days, and then it's yeah. if we have the snow weather and all of that, we can have those days built in. Mr. Porter. Aye. Ms. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. You got the full alphabet going here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vote. 20A, vote to approve and not approve all actions recommended in the human resources reports. Move to approve. Second. Questions. Okay, can you can you tell can can we look at the at the human resources report and you can identify the teachers that will be coming on as adjunct? They are not identified on this one because I wanted to get the policy first. The oh, okay. But when we move down a little 20, further. 20.G. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They'll be specific. Now, going forward, we will be able to do them oh, under got the it. general personnel Thank you. report. Thank you. Thank you. I got I, it. I pulled them inside in case there was an issue because we didn't. You. Okay. We wanted everyone else to get hired if they were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Better to be safe than sorry. Mr. Porter. Aye. Ms. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Chair votes aye. 20 B. Vote to approve and not approve items that were agreed upon in the negotiations between the district representative and the bargaining agents for the respective 2022 2023 school year's master agreement. One, Association of Classroom Teachers, ACT. Ms. Houston. President Vickers, members of the board, and Dr. Cobb, I'm very pleased to bring to you the negotiated agreement between the board and the uh, Association of Classroom Teachers. We met twice and were able to hash everything out for the most part. And um, the first part is the salary changes because prior, uh, last year they kept salary separate and then language. So when I got here, salary was completed and language needed to be finalized. And this year we did it all together. So um, the first part that you see will be the changes for um, stipends and things along those lines. We had some additions, some exciting additions, and then just some things we kind of rounded up a little bit and added to it due to changes in duties. Move to approve. Second. Second. Mr. Porter. Aye. Ms. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. 20C, vote to approve and not approve items that are recommended for the employee groups not covered up by negotiated agreements numbers one, two, and three. These are the compensation agreements for those folks who are not represented in a negotiated agreement, such as central office administrators, site administrators, things along those lines. Move to approve. approve. Second. Second. <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Porter. Aye. Ms. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. And the chair votes aye. 20D. 
vote to approve and not approve Middale School staff stipends that are administrative or not governed by negotiated agreement. Yes, so the only two that we added here were for the athletic, uh, I'm sorry, the lead nurse uh, with us. We used to have the head district nurse, district health coordinator, and the assistant. Now we have just the district health coordinator, but we do have uh, medical staff, either, either LPNs or RNs at each site, and this lead nurse stipend would be able to help Nurse Jones in her efforts if she happens to be pulled away to emergency at one site, then everyone defaults to this lead nurse. The other one we added was for athletic trainer. Um, we needed to increase our opportunities to have an athletic trainer, and so we're adding some teaching duties to that per They will be teaching, working with the students, and actually entering grades and things they haven't done prior. So those are the only two we added. Moved to approve. Second. Second. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Ms. Nolan. Aye. I'm sure both aye. May I ask you, I'm sorry, may I, do we have athletic trainers at all three schools now? Yes, ma'am. Good. We actually have another one wanting to come back, Good. so <laughs> that'd be great. So we do have trainers in all the high schools now? As of 7 p.m. on August 8th, we have an athletic <laughs> trainer at every high school. I haven't checked my email, so. <laughs> okay. 20E. Vote to approve and not approve staff travel stipends that are administrative and not governed by negotiated agreement. Yes, sir. We changed a few titles with the titles of doctor, with Dr. Eric leaving and, and Dr. Broyles taking over, just kind of changed assistant superintendent of instruction and then executive director of teaching and learning. We didn't really alter the quantities, just the title of the individual. Okay. We also, we did make a change to the Director of Community Relations, uh, Ms. Boyer's traveling around quite a bit more, and with the cost of gas, we did change that one. We also increased for our Homeless Liaison, Homeless Liaison Administrator, Assistant Director of Special Services, and Executive Director of Special Services, primarily due to the, the cost of fuel and the amount of travel that they do. We also added district-wide, find each financial secretary a stipend. What they were having to do in the past was keep track of all of their mileage and then do re reimbursement. They are required to go to the bank basically every day. That was a lot to keep up with. We're sure that probably there were times that maybe there were some inaccuracies and just to keep it more equitable for everyone it'll be the $500 stipend across the board for each financial secretary and then we also added one for each the possibility for each site manager in our cafeterias the reason being they take money and they have to make those deposits as well three of our sites are CEP schools they don't take money so they don't have to do that it won't apply to them um, and then our child nutrition coordinators they've been doing the reimbursement as well and we'll just do a flat fee Moved to approve. Second. So, so based upon all the compensation increases we're doing and all of that, where do we stand with our beginning teachers? With our beginning? Beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, we increased it by 1500 so the starting pay will be 41500 Excellent. And that's comparable to districts it's around ahead us? ahead of Norman, and it's just 500 below more. Good job. Good job. We're on our way, but. <laughs> that's better than before. Yes, ma'am. Just got to get the state off their rear. Yeah. Hmm. No Mr. comment. <laughs> yeah. I, I about jumped in there. <laughs> Mr. Porter. Aye. Ms. Snowman. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Chair votes aye. 20F, vote to approve, not approve pay rate re rates and revisions for 2022 and 2023. Ms. Houston. Yes, sir. There were just a few changes here. We worked on the coach sponsor driving to activities. So these are situations where the team needs to get to Yukon or wherever, and we need someone to drive the bus. So instead of paying them the $20 for inside the city, we are changing that to 40 and then 55 outside of the metro. I think we said something earlier, but 40 and 55. And then we were increasing our ISR instructors from $10 an hour to $12.50 per hour. 
and then increasing our security guards from $25 an hour to $35 an hour, and then our security guards at the Career Academy. We had gone ahead and made that adjustment last year t tentatively just to see if we could get more interest in that position because a, secure guard, a security mm -hmm. guard at our Career Academy is not that it's not critical at other sites, but that one can be pretty pretty needed. And so we had moved that one to $40 per hour. Moved to approve. Second. Second. Ms. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. Chair votes aye. 20G, vote to approve and not approve the individuals as listed on the agenda to serve as adjunct instructors for FY 2022-2023. Move to approve. Second. I have a so these are the specific people that we have requested mm -hmm. to hire as adjunct instructors. Um, so far, again, we have two at Epperly Heights, one at Midwest City High School, one at Midwest City Middle School, and one at Dell City High School. And those are the individuals who would meet that adjunct instructor policy that we just talked about. I need to add something, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. So this is for the 2022-2023 school year, what they, they're being hired. And we're still posting these positions. Mm -hmm. Do you understand my concerns without saying anything? So, you're posting these positions. Yes, ma'am. You're these people the 2022, 2023 school year. Yes, ma'am. But we will, we will leave them open, and we will okay. hope that certified staff apply for them. Now, these people, there are employees, but if we have the opportunity, we, I'm sure we can work out something to get them in our district and get them hired in those positions. Or all goals are to keep class sizes down, but let's just say that we have, uh, for example, I'll use Mr. Hill. He's hiring a fifth grade, recommending mm -hmm. a fifth grade adjunct teacher. If the perfect unicorn teacher walks in and mm -hmm. she has 20, he or she has 20 years of teaching experience in fifth grade and we want to get that person and maybe there's someone who has higher numbers at another site we get that person in here and get them on contract as well we're not going to let those people pass by but so this just is leave to them help in the system now. we just we just we're utilize them maybe in another position they'll so be utilized be. well okay. and in the best interest of students we aren't going to just pull them out of the okay. classroom okay. but it could be something where we pair them up it, it's all such a, a new new path that we're traveling. We'll just have to okay. let it play out. Okay. Okay, Dr. Kirk? Aye. Dr. Daniel? Aye. Dr. Mr. Porter? Aye. Mrs. Nolan? Aye. And the chair votes aye. 20H, vote to approve and not approve James McMahon? Carl Albert High School to teach one hour each day outside of his current certification area as an adjunct teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So this is different because he is a fully certified credentialed teacher to teach, I believe, math. He'll be teaching at Carl Albert High School, but because of their need of a psychology teacher and his willingness to teach that, he is going to be an adjunct teacher for those two hours of psychology class but he'll still be teaching his other his other coursework will be math or whatever he's certified in so he's only adjuncting for a different subject area so he's going to be on two pay schedules no ma'am he'll say. still be on the certified he okay, is a certified you. teacher so he Perfect. stays on the certified hey, this is yeah. something that we've done for, for years. years yes yeah this is okay this goes back to the normal adjunct process that we've right. had in place okay a long time. very good Dr. move to approve Second. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Oh, I see you. I see you. Stay right. <laughs> okay. 20 aye. Vote to approve or not approve the MDTC 11 month practical nursing instructor salary schedule for 2022-2023. This is an adjustment, yes sir. This is an adjustment to try to, again, entice teachers to come in and, and work on the 11 month practical nursing uh, instructor salary schedule. So just bumping that up. Moved to approve. Second. Mr. Ford. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Chair votes aye. 20J. 
Vote to approve, not approve the re request for deregulation of planning period for Catherine Rollins Midwest City High School for 2022-2023. Move to approve. Second. And Kath, she she does this, or I know she did it last year. She just gives up she gives up her plan time, and then we compensate her for that so that we can offer an additional period of of Spanish. What a dedicated teacher. Yes. We have a lot of them around here. Yeah, we do. We really do. Yeah. I remember yeah. this from last year. Yeah. Okay. It's coming it's back no to one. us, isn't Aye. it? Yeah. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Are you new business? No, sir. There is no new business. We're finished. <laughs> do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. And second that motion. Listen. Dr. Kirk. Aye. Dr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Porter. Aye. Mrs. Nolan. Aye. And the chair votes. Aye. Aye.